Cyberpunk had what you might call... How's it going? A rocky release. But luckily, the yakitori from the game hits the spot. And yeah, I loved Cyberpunk. It wasn't perfect, but I got my 60 hours out of it. The level of detail is still astonishing, especially when it comes to the food stalls. Some minor spoilers ahead, but today we're looking at the yakitori ordered by Takemura in the mission Gimme Danger. I'd say this comes somewhere around the halfway mark of the game. This mission involves hacking a parade float, but what's important is the food. While talking with Takemura, he says he hasn't eaten since yesterday. You sit down and he orders the best on the menu. The chef suggests, I highly recommend the yakitori today. As Takemura takes a bite, he throws it down in disgust. What is this? Hey, yakitori. And this is actually a really nice moment in the story. Takemura has fallen from grace. He used to be the personal bodyguard to the very powerful, and now very dead, Saburo Arasaka. He's used to eating real food, which is reserved for the rich and the powerful, but now he's been pushed back to the streets where they can only afford kibble and synthetic food. His palate isn't adjusted for the yakitori from the food stall. Also, CD Projekt Red says Takemura has a strong belief that food should be prepared in a traditional manner which is basically impossible if you're not using real ingredients. At the end of the game, during the mission Where Is My Mind, if you accept Takemura's deal, he says he hopes to one day show you real food. Visit me in Kagawa. I will show you what is real food. Well, I can't make synthetic food, we can make something closer to what Takemura would have been expecting. Now we part. Let's kick this off with a super simple sauce. I am missing my tablespoon uh, spoon, so I need to use my half tablespoon measuring thing. So let's combine three tablespoons of soy sauce, three tablespoons of mirin, and half a tablespoon of sugar. Mix and heat up until it starts to boil, and then drop it to a medium heat and let it simmer for three to five minutes, and you should lose about a third of the sauce here. Now, this video has a few things that, upon reflection, I would do differently. I'll point those out as we go, but to start, let's get our chicken and we're already on our first boo-boo. I used only chicken thighs here, about a pound, and I also trimmed some of the excessive pieces of fat. In the future though, I'd probably go about one third to half chicken breast to help with the structure of the yakitori. Regardless, cube the chicken and mince together in a food processor. Add in half a teaspoon of salt and mix together in a bowl. After that, it's time to grate an onion, which was a first for me, until you have about a tablespoon. Add it into the mix and then peel and grate one piece of ginger, not a first for me, and squeeze the juice out until you have about a teaspoon. Add that in, then add in an egg, and finally add in a teaspoon of soy sauce and one and a half tablespoons of cornstarch. Mix all that, and this is where I realized in real time that my yakitori were going to be lacking in structure. To compensate, I roughly doubled the cornstarch, and that did help. From there, it's time to form the yakitori. I suggest getting some disposable gloves for this as well as a melon baller, but I forgot, so there's another lesson learned. Roughly form the balls, which, because they are lacking in a little structure, we'll describe as rustic. Place them on a parchment sheet and heat up a pot of water until it is boiling. Carefully place the uncooked balls into the water and let that ride for about 7 minutes. Also, we're going to toast some sesame seeds. Simply add a teaspoon to a pan, heat on medium, and then toss after about a minute. After another minute or so, you should have some golden brown sesame seeds. Retrieve your boiled yakitori from the pot and skewer. Baste on two sides with our sauce and grill on medium-high heat for about two minutes per side, or do one minute on four sides, basting each side as you turn. You're looking for some deep brown color, almost burnt, but not quite. Cut up some green onion for color and crunch and get your yakitori from the pan. You can also grill these if you have the ability to do so outside, but I don't, so a cast iron will have to do. Plate and baste in more sauce, drop a few toasted sesame seeds on the top, and you're done. Despite using only thighs, these did end up holding their shape and being super tender and juicy. A great street food, but what if we deep fried them? If you want to try, after you've boiled your yakitori, combine half a cup of flour, one teaspoon each of salt and pepper, and beat one egg and dip the yakitori in the egg first, and then the flour. Now here's another boo-boo. 
I double breaded, which didn't end up being bad, but if we want ultra crunchy, we need to bread once and then double fry. Regardless, if doing it my way, heat a neutral oil like canola to about 325 to 350 and gently drop in the yakitori. Since these are already cooked, we are just looking for crispiness on the outside. The double breading method took about 5 minutes, but if you're double frying, heat your oil to 250, fry until lightly golden, remove, heat the oil back up to 350, and drop back in for another 3 minutes or so. At the end of the day, we're finishing these off the same way as the grilled ones, baste in sauce, all over, toss in a few sesame seeds, and enjoy with some green onion. All in all, a fantastic snack that hopefully Takamura would approve of.